I've just started it. It's it started. Okay, everything's fine. It's on the air now. <laughs> By the way, real real quick. Yes, Ryan. Um, all of these show notes are brand new. Yes, yes, yes. Most of them are because no one got back to me on my idea. Well, I'm wait, sorry. wait. Which no. ones should I have read? I read the, the one, one about the six beer <laughs> cocktails. I, yes. I, God damn it. There's a lot more here that I'm not. I read. For. The Andromeda bullshit. Yeah, that's, well, that's good. That's those the are one. Good. Yeah, those are good. But the one that I read didn't have Andromeda bullshit. What is Andromeda and what is it important to? Ryan, I'll, God damn it, we'll get to I'll, it. I'll, I'll talk <laughs> about it. The show. Yes, Dane, you'll, you'll be my support for that because it's it's Mass Effect. Oh. oh. Uh, I didn't read either. <laughs> I'm just going to say how much this Mass Effect I had a lot going on. My talking points. I'm going to kill everyone. I'm going to kill everyone. <laughs> It's going to be a little difficult from there. Are you guys ready to start the show? We're yes. live, so yeah. I've been ready Let's for 30 minutes. All right, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 31. <laughs> Welcome to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, craft brews and geek news. Sit back, pour yourself a pint, and let's get into it. Now here's the founder of the Brewmasters Club and your host, Donnie Gallagher. And uh, welcome. Wow. What a... uh... (laughs) They say 2022 20, is a tough one. You know, I believe them now after, after hearing that, that, I, that thing that I just made up. How are you guys today? 22nd <laughs> time is the charm, I tell you. Yep. Yeah, you know, you got to try a few times, and then eventually you get to that 22nd one, and oop, oop, right? It's the old curse. It's what the kids <laughs> Yep. <Fuck. laughs> So, um, welcome to to uh, the twenty second episode of the Masters Club Craft Brews and Geek News. <laughs> my name is Dottie. I'm the I'm the co host of the show here, along with uh, some of my best friends. Ryan, how are you tonight? I'm doing good. Coming in loud and clear. Yes, you are. You can actually hear you, unlike me, for the last thirty minutes. Rob Laos, how are you? How are you, man? Oh, I'm doing good. Feeling much better. I uh, see so you're still beardless. That's that's cool. Working on it though. I it's coming. Tell. Dane, how are you? Out. <laughs> Standing, my friend. How are you tonight, Donnie Gallagher in the house? I was having, I was having a great, I was having a great night, and then all of a sudden, shit just hit the fan. So who knows? <laughs> um, but we've got, we've got an interesting night uh, ahead of us because, as Ryan uh, so delicately uh, pointed out, I put a lot of these notes on here uh, recently because a lot, of, a lot of new shit was happening. I had one story on here that I knew we needed to talk to. Um, talk about but but there's um, some interesting stuff about what's coming up in the uh, next few weeks here especially for us as the room Masters club this podcast uh the uh the guys in it here and what we do for the the tampa bay area and the craft beer industry in the scene in general um on top of that we've got some new year new trends new year new beers right last man you were talking about that last uh last episode of course um, we, uh, we also have a girthy amount of, uh, geek news that is not Rogue One or Star Wars related because we kind of, we really t- did a lot of Star Wars stuff and we, we were trying to do it justice and we are trying to cover like any good, um, professional news bearing podcast, uh, would that we are as such. Uh, but what we, what, what I also did was grab some, some new stuff that was coming from some different video games and, uh, tech news and all sorts of stuff. So chicks love the girth, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a nickel, I'd have one nickel. You know, how many nickels for girth? I don't know. Where were you going with that? Are you buying girth? Is it cost a nickel? <laughs> you guys, you guys ready to get into this? Because this first story is kind of wacky. I yeah. Don't know. Um, so basically, I was so I was sent this story from uh, from a friend of of the show, 
and uh, and you know tweet at Brewmasters Clubcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We'll we'll pick them up and we'll we'll use your stories. This is one that came and it was kind of like a New Year's Eve story. And so what this was was uh, as as craft beer gets more popular, there's there's a thing called a craft beer cocktail that's also becoming more more popular. Um, it's things that are weird, like the New Jack Screwdriver, which is an IPA cocktail <clears throat> featuring a fruit forward hop. Um, and apple brandy, which probably is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It actually sounds pretty good. Um, some of them are kind of bizarre. I'll say that. But some of them are neat. Did you guys get a chance to look through any of these? Because I'd love to. They're definitely out there, Donnie. I'll tell you that. Yeah, IPA Manhattan. So it's a Manhattan-style beer cocktail made with rye bourbon, sweet vermouth, and a high-gravity IPA. I would never have vermouth. Poured... It'll, it'll get you. Yeah. So is that the, the beer? Guy? Is that the beer you want to drink yeah. when you're on your period? I don't, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> they're, uh, so a Tom Mix Wash, an herbal spicy beer cocktail featuring rye, ginger beer, pilsner, and a mint. Got to have the mint. If I'm feeling down, I might just drink some cranberry juice. <laughs> just kick yourself right in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. That helps a little bit. So they had a yeah. Garvey's Ghost, which is a beer with sherry cocktail featuring tropical flavors and a Berlin-style Weiss. Uh, sherry beer... Tropical flavors. Sounds pretty wise. I'll, yeah. I'll go. I'll be in the car. I was. I was. <laughs> I was like on board. I was on board with these. I'm like, okay, this is kind of neat, right? We talk about this. It's kind of like it's kind of like like different types of beers. And then I'm like, this is just uh, mint and milk stout meet coffee liqueur. Creamy beer, co- uh, peppermint warmer. Just give me a white Russian and call it a day. Yeah. So you want to add some? Do they milk the cow into the beer? <laughs> That's that's that sounds. Although I, I I will say, and this isn't on the list, but you can use a ginger beer uh, for a Moscow Mule, and that's actually pretty good. But this well, is ginger. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of ginger beer recipes that are pretty good. Beer, beer, but it's yeah, alcoholic it's in some fashion. There. The uh, not your father's ginger ale beer is pretty good. Beer is pretty good though. So <laughs> not your father's beard. Not so did I say beard? I thought I said beard. Maybe I said, did say beard. I thought you said I think beard. You said beard again. Like, so the beer, D beer, is beer, silent. Beer, 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 beer. The D, the D is always silent when Dane's involved. Oh, 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 oh I, would, I would know, wouldn't I? I'm all about the girth, bro. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, but you had a nickel. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got, he's got one nickel. <laughs> So this is an article out of out of Men's Journal. It's called Six Beer Cocktails to Add to Your Repertoire. I don't really believe it. In fact, I'm really against all of it. Um, the only beer that I like, like mixing with a cocktail, have you guys ever mixed uh, like a shitty beer with uh, Bloody Mary? Because that's actually mm, really good. No. If you, if you, oh, it's real, it's really good because it adds it adds that beer kind of carbonation note, and it makes the ah. it makes the Bloody Mary taste like meatier. It's really it's <laughs> meaty. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a meteor crashing into Earth, or like no, like a like big a, yeah, meteor, like, like right in the back, uh, yeah, like, like like right near. Uh, you know. <laughs> got it. I, I'm tracking now. Okay, tracking now. <laughs> ah, so that was the uh, so that was that story to kick things off. Yeah. Um, Got that? Any final comments on that before we move on to the next story? What is plantain syrup? Because that's an ingredient on the Garvey's Ghost, and I want to know what the hell is plantain syrup? Garvey's I've Loss. never heard of Loss. it. Loss can take that one. Go ahead, Loss. I'm sorry. Plantain syrup just seems to play exactly into what you guys have been referring to this entire time. We got to go find a Jamaican. Grabbing, grabbing right by the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly well, so you what can do the sound is, better, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, you have to, you have to grab him pretty low, right in the old. Uh... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, that's, that's not good radio. <laughs> yes, it is. It's this hilarious. is great radio. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> See, we need more improv from you, Laz. That's why it's fucking, it's hilarious when you, you just gotta, uh, you just gotta get in there, man. Just grab it, grab that right by the girth. Right by the plantain. Right by the... <laughs> Grabbing life by the plantain. Isn't that a bumper sticker of yours, Ryan? Uh, it should be. Hashtag grabbing life by the plantain. That's way too, come on, <laughs> 
That oh fits. My. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that was uh, – <laughs> thanks for sticking with us on that one. That was our first story. Which it's is all that quiet. tropical beer talk. You got us all I know. gay. Like. Yeah. I don't, I, and I've had that one on here since uh, New Year's Day, so I don't know what the fuck is going on. But, um, <laughs> more, importantly, more importantly, we, have a, we, we do have a, a bit of, of uh, important news to talk about. It's the first day. We, we kind of hit it on it with the, the interview from Mark. Uh, to note, the writer, author of the Great Florida Beer Guide, um, Florida Craft Beer Day is, uh, is coming up, guys. And, and we were talking before the show started here to see, you know, boots on the ground. And I'm looking at you two right now, Ryan and Laos. You guys are going to do, I'm sorry if I haven't told you this, but you're going to do a live podcast from the event during the event and where we go, we're going to invite about 25 other breweries in to the, the, the podcast itself. So if they want to join in or they have the technical capabilities to, they, they can, they will. We're also going to have a live feed set up of our party. So basically, as you guys are talking, <clears throat> when you stop talking, the live feed of our party will take over so folks can see what's going on while, while we're uh, coming together from 6 to 8 p.m. on the 15th at the, the nation's first brewery uh, where, they, where Florida uh, Brewing Company started, founded. Uh, they served the Rough Riders. They served Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, they survived up into Prohibition. They closed down. They opened up again. They sold. They sold. They closed down again. But the building itself still says – the Florida Brewing Company. It has been there since 1897. Started construction in 1896. It is a phenomenal testament to the sands of time and beer in general. So every year, the Brewmasters Club goes and, and sets up this event in this historic building on the 15th of February. And last year, we had the mayor actually proclaim this day as a as as it as an, as it well, as a citywide uh, recognition for uh, the economic growth of beer and what it's done for not only the, the economy of the state of Florida, but for the nation. Um, pretty cool, right, guys? Yeah, and that's a lot of pressure. Uh, but no we're pressure. For it. I'm going to be None. there. Chet's oh. going to be there. It's, you guys are going to have your own dedicated uh, table, and you guys are going to be the MCs of the wow. event for the wow. world to chime into. I wow. am ecstatic. I've got just one or two things right up top. Uh, first <laughs> off, right guy, we should dress exactly. We should dress in full suits and act just like the announcers of like a WWE event. I'll bring my cowboy hat, <laughs> and we just the whole time we're just oh yay! I like, I mean, just a hooting and or hollering. I like all of it. You I can am, hoot and holler, but I'll wear somebody wear something nice. How's that? Somebody's got yeah. to scream like Vince McMahon. That's all I'm saying. Woo! See, Woo! there we go. See, that's what I'm on. Yeah. That's that's what I'm about. I'm writing that book. Okay, I like it. Can I'm we good. do the let's yeah. get ready to rumble? Is that is that a thing? No? Is that too cliche? Yeah. So you can do it. So here's what I'm setting up for you guys. As as the commentators, you guys will sit there and we will feed you beers all night long. <laughs> so all you have to do is sit at a table Ubering. and talk about what's going on. Yeah. And then relay that back. And when it, it and if other breweries, you know, that there have the ability and the the staff to to jump in and to contribute to this, that's great. And we'll talk about it. If not, you guys are the eyes and ears that have to talk about what's going on for the event, for the ceremony, when the proclamation is unveiled, who's talking, what they're talking about, and then you guys have to provide that insight to to our great fans here in the community. But enough about what you guys have to do. Everybody's listening right now. I was saying, "What the hell is Florida Craft Beer Day?" So basically, yeah. it's a, it's a day where we at the Brewmasters Club again we are in support of drinking local craft beer, and we are in support of what craft beer does, not just because we enjoy drinking it, but because of the impact it does have on others. Uh, we are community driven, as I've always said, every single time, twenty two episodes in a row now. Um, craft beer has done a lot to date. There's 5,000 national breweries. Do you guys know that? 5,000. We talked about this again with the Mark interview. If you've watched or listened to the whole thing, that's a shitload of breweries. That's about 1,200 more breweries than have ever existed at one time ever in the nation's history. It's incredible. It's impressive. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Craft beer, I mean, well, well, beer in general nationwide is is responsible for damn near 2 million jobs. 1.75 due, due to a, a 2013 study from the National Brewers Association. Um, it brings in $252 billion to the national economy, um, which is amazing. And again, 
people think that beer is just beer and that it's silly and that it's, you know, something people drink to get drunk. Of course they do. Sure. There's always going to be frat boys. Beer is a little bit different. Beer, beer has brought to the state of Florida 22,000 Floridian jobs. So Floridians that are employed. Uh, $1.2 billion in uh, wages and salaries for, for folks that live in the state. So again, think about that. Um, the, the, the impact that, that might cause on, on your neighbor or your friend or your cousin, um, whatever it may be, $655 million in federal and state uh, taxes paid. So Uncle Sam's getting a freaking shakedown on this thing. I mean, everybody's getting a piece of craft beer, and craft beer is just here to just just give out all the plantain you know, syrup all day. Plantain syrup. That, <laughs> that's kind of what craft beer is. It's just that that cool of thing. So um, I had to bring this up because we hadn't we hadn't hit on it yet. Talking with Mark for that interview that we had kind of spurred things, you know, to, to really like start talking about it. But this event is, is something serious and it's something very special. So I just wanted to, to raise that up. And, and, and Dane, you won't be with us, but I, I still want to get your, your, your buy-in on this. And I want to know what you, what you think about an event like this and the ceremony because, you know, last year at this time we didn't have this podcast to reflect on. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Um, actually, what day is that on, uh, Donnie? Wednesday, the 15th of February. 15th of February. Uh, shit, man. Sorry, just big pile of shit for uh, February 15th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make it. So uh, I see your calendar looks pretty booked. Yeah. <laughs> can you at least, yeah, can you at least... <laughs> it's full. It's full. Can you at least join, can you at least join the MCs here in, in helping them to, uh, to, to commentate through the event? Yeah. What's that, a Wednesday? So – I'll show up. What's up? All you gotta do is chime in. I'll, you, the, I'll give you the link right now. Uncle Sam loves to shake me down all the time. Here, you know. Oh, okay. the, yeah. So you're I in. Think I think it's. I'm in. Why? All right. It's a huge right on. opportunity. Um, to kind of get out there and really join a great event, and yeah. I'm I'm real excited for what that can bring. No, I was just going to say, having gone to that event last year as we all came together and cheers, I mean, everybody that was in that room was there for the uh, camaraderie. And as we talked about last week's uh, podcast, you know, the community of craft beer drinkers. So I think having that nationally recognized or uh, at least statewide or citywide nationally recognized day, I think it's a really beautiful thing to come together. You said there's going to be 25 breweries? Is that So what we've got, so we, we actually partnered up with the second uh, one of the one of the larger one of the larger distributors here in, in the the Tampa area, and in, in reality, they're one of the larger distributors in the state of Florida, and so they've got a portfolio of breweries that are going to be joining us. Now, as you guys have known, and most people that they go to breweries know, they're 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 typically busy as hell, understaffed, and and guys that don't necessarily uh, participate in a lot of the pomp and circumstance that that's you know fancy ceremonies tend to hang out but we're going to supply links out to everybody to have them to invite them to to have to encourage them to join us to to be in a part of this so that we can share what's going on in their tap rooms what's going on in our hq what's going on at cigar city or or this brewery here or there in tallahassee or wherever and we're going to encourage that as you join now now many of those may or may not join us um, it's really up to their capacity and what their 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 guys can handle. Um, I'm gonna try like hell to get some of this training worked out so we can get everybody on board. Because how cool would it be if we had Miami and Sarasota and Tampa and Orlando and Tallahassee and Gainesville all kind of just chiming in on these different pieces of, of what's going on? And then all of a sudden at seven o'clock we come together for a you know a simul toast is essentially what the goal is. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> That's that's the goal. It's crazy, and it's it's a little bit wild for for something like this to happen because it's never been done before. But but why not try, right? Just to celebrate, Absolutely. just to celebrate what what beer has done. So, Lost awesome. Man, what were your what were your thoughts, brother? How soggy is that portfolio? Because I feel like if you put twenty five beers in anything, it's not going to last too long. <laughs> I can just imagine like a sap, like they turn it and they're like, "Ew, geez, we should have thought this one through." <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited to I'm excited to MC that. I'm excited to to see that day come around again. Well, let me love the proclamation. Yeah, let me um, let me give you guys a heads up. If you want to go ahead and just put in uh, FloridaCraftBeerDay.com in your browser, 
Um, you can find out all the information about what Florida Craft Beer Day is about. You might want to do this, Laos man, so you can read up on some history here and uh, and get some witty one liners up so that you can you can carry some of Ryan's wit because he's Ryan's a talker, Laos man. So you you gotta you gotta be able to support him because you won't have the full breadth of the podcast here. Um, Chet will be here, my, our our partner from uh, Chicago. He will be in town, um, so that's cool, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a great time. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say absolutely. No, it'll be great to great to see uh, Chet, and great to uh, you know wear a, wear a cowboy hat and talk a little smack. And you, know, <laughs> you just really want to wear that cowboy hat. He don't really you? fucking does. Yeah, he really likes it's, that. Cowboy hat. It's <laughs> absolutely coming. It's absolutely coming. Well, I'm telling you right now, we we are 40, 40 days, twenty one hours, nine minutes, and four seconds away from Florida Craft Beer Day. So get mm. that fuck ready, Louse. There is a countdown. Prepare um, your shit. I will be, I will be ordering a uh, Madonna style mic immediately. Can't bring this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Better than a Mariah Carey mic at that point. Oh, yeah. Jesus. And, and anybody that's out there listening to us, if you want to be a part of Florida Craft Beer Day, it's really simple. Um, you can actually celebrate from your from your couch. We'll be tweeting out and, and putting out the uh, the uh, YouTube link to watch the live cast. You can comment there. You'll be able to chat. You can engage. You can um, uh, send hate mail to Ryan and Laos as they're talking. And Dane, of course, who will be judging there. You can ask questions if you want to get, um, hey, there's a, the, a head brewer from Cigar City. I want to ask him a question. Boom, you can do that right through the YouTube channel. It'll be it'll be really amazing. All you have to do uh, in the meantime, if you want to get stuff answered ahead of time, hashtag <laughs> Florida, Florida Craft Beer Day. If you hashtag Florida Craft Beer Day, we will see it. It will actually show up on the home page of our website. So do that. Get your pictures. Get your photos. Um, take a picture with your favorite craft beer and and use that hashtag. You'll you'll show up right here on our homepage of, of FloridaCraftBeerDay.com. And we will definitely answer your questions, and those bros will get to whatever they can. So um, exciting shit, man. But I, I did want to bring it up for the first time. We will we will kind of tease this and, and provide more details and kind of slow drip stuff out, just like those Jamaican plantains up until the event. <laughs> so oh, stay, stay here. <laughs> Who's and, slow um, dripping out there? <laughs> 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 oh, I don't think do it. <laughs> that is a real problem. Sorry. Um, you guys stoked? Sound good? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Donnie, I might have to clean up my schedule, and I'll, I'll let you know, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and Laos, I'll, I'll have to get you a shirt as well. We'll, uh, we'll work that nope. out. Won't need it. I'll be in a full suit with my cowboy hat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's fine. Are you going to scream, whammy? Yep. <laughs> whammy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Jokes for right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you were joking. I got all this oh, you were serious. Oh, damn. No, I'm drop dead serious. I know you are. Seriously. Mm-hmm. I, that's okay. I support you. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> wild card. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wild card. He's wild card. We know Dane is the wild Uh-oh. card. Everybody knows that. Of course. So, all right. So, we're going to move on here. So, the next segment, geez. So, the next segment that we have here. Um, we always go into our, uh, our what are you drinking? What are you going to drink? I would love to... Me and Laos are working on some musical accommodations to to grease the wheels here. Are we not, Laos? Oh, yes. Been at it today. All right. Good. That's good. Bros, what would you bring today? What would you bring? I brought something very special, but I'll get into it in a second. Uh, I brought what I was drinking last week, so. Uh, oh, you got a little cold mountain, eh? Yeah. Still working on this. Check out last week's episode. I go full hard in depth on this baby nickel. right here just nickel and diamond yeah. <laughs> no All dimes no dimes yes yeah, so check out last week's uh because i forgot honestly so check out last See week's and uh yeah yeah i talk all about it cold mountain shit yeah Laos man Oh, so um i i took the uh, recommendation of a local beer I, you know since i got rid of the beard i'm not allowed down at the wharf anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh, um but no i uh i actually did go into uh, um, a craft event and uh and got one of their recommendations it's uh it's an iowa beer uh however 
it's not uh, not quite the Iowa we all know and love or do. Um, actually, so it's reverse Iowa, like when Superman re- turned evil. It's like that, but. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's actually just a beer. <laughs> it's, oh, uh, it's, it's it's made by Toppling Goliath Brewing Company. Um, they're based out of Iowa in the United States, of course. It is an American IPA. Posted um, that Russian Iowa. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's a, I'm a man of many Iowas, but um, actually, it's... Aren't we it's, all? <laughs> uh, huge fan. Huge fan because I really like they use what I believe they describe in the can as nugget hops. Don't know what that means, but uh, nougat. they're actually Nugent hops. It's from the Ted Nugent hop collection. New Nugent. Nugent. Okay, That's, should have should have seen that coming. Um, but uh, no, it's a good little beer. It's got a little bit of citrus, a little bit of evergreen. Apparently, don't know if I should be drinking that, but that's that's okay. I thought that was a plant, but uh, in any event, it finishes on like a fruity note. So pretty cool. Um, it's, uh, but the weird thing about it is actually um, it's an Iowa beer that was made here in Lakeland. So it was actually produced um, at the Brew Hub, which is local here in Lakeland. And it was made for or under the license and trademark of the uh, Toppling Goliath. So pretty neat. It's kind of local, but it's far away. Same time. So that's no, that's very cool because that that brew hub model is is impressive. They basically have brought over beers from that were exclusively made, sold, produced in Thailand, China, Japan, Eastern Europe, um, all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah, Iowa, Russia, right? I can't can't forget that place. Um, mm-hmm. But the kicker is that they're 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 brewing. So the brewmasters send their ingredients. You know, essentially, water, uh, brewmasters, staff, whatever, come over here, brew that beer here, and then are able to sell a beer that is, you know, a 20 hour plane ride away here, as fresh as it would be if you were to buy it there. Um, it, it's so it's an amazing concept because it's not Brew Hub, the facility is not a, a brewery per se, is it's not like a competition to that. So they're a facilitator and they're like, hey, listen, Brew Hub. You, you, Ryan, you have a beer. You're in Tampa. Laos, you're in Lakeland. Dane, you're in North Carolina. You guys, you send me your beer recipes. We'll brew them. We'll bottle them. We'll send them out for you. It's an amazing ah. capitalistic model for, for, for brewing beer. And they do have their own beers, which is, which is fine and great and all. But it also allows for brands like what Laos is explaining to be bigger than they are. Because even Cigar City in its infancy or i guess in its growth period was like hey listen man we can't match we can't match the competition or we can't match the the demand that that is being thrown upon us in our brewery we just can't afford to do it so we're going to outsource our brewing to increase our supply to meet our demand so that we can compete with the big dogs and essentially you can take a very small brewery um and maximize their output to compete with those guys. So the beer that Laos brought is so important to the, uh, the, the crossroads that is craft beer in terms of the more brew hubs that are out there embracing this model, which, which is it's, we're damned. It's, it's going to be here and there's going to be more of them, but the more that that happens, the more these little, good successful breweries can become big household names and again that is what brings jobs and growth and expansion and good beer to not just us but from iowa russia to iowa the united (laughs) states to tampa fucking florida i mean that's how it works right like that's that's what the progression is and this is a direct result of that so so if you you look really into that that model it's impressive so i'm sorry i didn't mean to hijack that but you hadn't mentioned to me that like you wanted to talk about that i just think it's crucial to, to hit on those uh quick little tip for speaking to anybody local in the uh lakeland tampa orlando area if you're looking to identify a beer like this particular golden nugget um it's actually on the bottom some one of the things one of their trademarks at brew hub is they actually label it cheers and then they have the date in which they actually produced it. So if you look on the bottom of your craft beer and uh, it says cheers, then guess what? You got that from Lakeland. So it will that. Nice. All right, Ryan. So go ahead. You're next. 
It's hard to top that last two weeks in a row, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. Bringing the kind of just Damn. beast mode, really. But yeah, go on. Well, mode. <laughs> What I'm drinking right now is, uh, we've talked about it probably a couple of times, it's the uh, Goose Island IPA. Great beer. And um, I didn't know this little fun fact, but turns out that their hops are grown for Goose Island at Elk Mountain Farm in Bonners Ferry, Idaho, which is pretty interesting. So they get their uh, hops from that farm and uh, brew their beer with it. But more interestingly, a beer that I really want to try is a new Funky Buddha beer that's coming out. It is the last buffalo in the park, and it is a imperial porter aged in a bourbon barrel with coconut, coffee, and natural flavors of – I can't see that last word there. Uh, but So that actually looks really good. If you guys uh, want to check that out, let us know if you can find it and uh, send me some. <laughs> That's what I got. So That's pretty cool, man. No, I like that. I like how you had the, um, the Goose Island with the elk farms. <laughs> Over yeah. Boner Creek. That was nice. <laughs> uh, maybe I read it wrong. I thought it was Bonners, but it could have been Boners. So, La- so Laos is getting his, his beer from Pornhub. And, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan's getting his beer from Boner Creek. What the hell is going on? We're, and we're and this beer that I have here is... In the park. <laughs> This one came from Schlong Long Johnson. No. Oh no! <laughs> no, this is that. This is Spartan Kick IPA. I've, I've, been, I've really just been enjoying them. Uh, I'm just blowing them out at this point because, like, they keep getting better. I think that every every week that goes by, our beer gets a little bit better. I don't know what you think, Ryan. Have you? Have you? I've gotten a few bad ones. I'm not gonna lie. I had like three. The three or I, I chose four to, to bring to Indianapolis over Christmas break. Three of them were absolute shit. So I don't know what the fuck oh. happened. But. I had Donnie. I had one. <laughs> Down and yeah. it was kind of malty. That's yeah, good. The ones that I thought were, the ones that I thought were real bad are the ones that were really sour. They were really sour. Yeah. Like something had gone wrong on the three that I tried in a row. I was like, oh, this is real bad. <laughs> but that is what that's what happens. I mean, it could be a number of things that happen. Ryan, have you? What has your experience been with our with our little baby here? Well, I've got two little babies left that I've kind of just been sitting on. One I'm going to age a little bit more. I don't know if it's going to improve it. But I'm just – I don't really want to run out of it because I want to see how it kind of blends together over time. But I had a couple that were hit or miss. But at the same time, I looked for – did it kind of taste fresh? Did it did it have yeah. at least a little hop to it with a little – Did it have a lot of yeast in it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that one that, that one kind of poured out of that's the bottle. Dude- that was due to our to our carboy situation. That is that has thus been improved. So – Yes. Next time we're and, uh, we're 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 straight shooting on that. That if I had a nickel, <laughs> still uh, uh, two nickels. You'd have a lot of boners in your face. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> God, you'd be, you'd be up Boner Creek without a paddle. Without oh, a dick for a paddle. Oh, so and, <laughs> and on the side of Elk my own Mountain. dick for a paddle. <laughs> and the side of Elk Mountain as well. But uh, hey, hey, paddle. It's still kicking. That's all I know. It's still kicking. So yeah. Well, well, what mostly. I have to say is that well, it is interesting though because it goes back to it goes back to the ownership and, and actually you know being being responsible for for what this is because there have been there there was actually like I drank three or four of them over the weekend last last weekend and man they were they were perfect they, it was it was it was I actually bought another uh, Turbo IPA clone or Turbo I, I bought this here in Nevada just to just to try it next to it and it was it was damn close. But it was like uh, three or four of them out of the eighteen that I've you know had so far were really good or not. So we we got improved, but it's um it was important to to see the difference in them. So that it, yeah. just, it just goes to show like how how specific and how how tedious and how important it is to take every step necessary to ensure that you're doing it right. Go ahead. Well, one thing I was gonna say is I I think what would really balance it out well because you know I'm not exactly sure where we fall in at on the ABV level, but. What really would I think balance that sweetness out a little better is a little bit more of a higher alcohol content. I think it's probably between three and four, but if we could have gotten yeah. it to that six or seven, I think we're talking a different ball game right now. So on the next well, one, think, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll we'll do that a little differently because I've got I've got some ideas for the next one. So I think yeah, we'll... and we'll make everybody proud over time. <laughs> Stick with us, yeah. and uh, one day maybe you can try our. Well, it's a journey. 
Yeah, it's a journey, and, and one day you will you will try beer because we're we're gonna do nothing but grow from here. Dang. I love it. I, I, Brian, I love it. Somebody. I love it. I love no. Brian's I was, I, was, I was drinking. He's playing ball games. <laughs> Brian's playing ball games over here. Hey, so Brian I loves uh, things that grow in or around his face. Wow. Great. So. With all that said, we are going to uh, to move on to some some greatly overdue, I guess, geek news because, uh, unfortunately, leading up to what the fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, whatever it was of December that that Rogue One came out, fourteenth, fourteenth. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> that led up to it. We had to. Uh, I, I felt. I mean, I think we all felt as, as Star Wars fans, and Ryan, as a budding Star Wars fan, felt it was it was our duty to just, you know really really bring it home and talk about how influential and all the things that Rogue One and the new Star Wars franchise and all the speculation that was going on. Then we had, you know, Carrie Fisher and, and we had to re- re- reflect on kind of what 2016 really did for, for the Star Wars franchise in terms of who we lost and things like that. So we had some, some, some different uh, important stuff going on. But what we didn't do is we, we really didn't circle back on, on some of the, the core geeky stuff that we always love to talk about. So I thought that I'd take today and we could kind of dive into a bit of rather uh, – ah, so, I mean, it's, it's hills and valleys, right? Because some of it's pretty geeky, some of it's pretty standard, and some of it's not. But the first story that we had – I don't know if you guys had seen this before um, or recently as I, I, I did throw these on here uh, – Nintendo's announced that it's actually going to air a special uh, live event on January 13th that's going to give viewers an up-depth, an in-depth look at the, the launch games for the Nintendo Switch. So we had we had covered the Nintendo Switch and we talked about it before. I think it's important to to continue talking about it because I know I'm going to get one. I love Nintendo, um, but how cool <laughs> is that that we're we're going to get a launch a launch list? I mean, Dane, Laos, I know you guys are the big gamers, Ryan. Uh, Maybe not so much. Working on it. <laughs> I played Madden the other day. That counts. That does count. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Donnie, I, I'm excited to see what they're going to offer. Really, the price point mainly. Uh, I got a yeah. lot of stuff going on in March. So, I'm, yeah, you do. I'm hoping the price point is <laughs> astronomical. Yeah. So, <laughs> we'll see. I really want it for that time that I will probably be awake in the middle of the night. So I can yeah. just have the little console. Yeah. Um, have you guys seen the, the PS4 commercials? Two forty nine, two forty nine, two forty nine. Yeah. It's I crazy. mean, it's it's gonna be. An, I I guarantee. I can almost. I'll put it right down now. Right now, it is the fifth of January. Two ninety nine. Not a dime or a nickel over. <laughs> two forty nine <laughs> would less. be better. I would. I, I would I jump on less. it at two forty nine. Two ninety nine. I'm gonna. Ugh. I think there's no way. Nine ninety five. One eighty nine ninety five. There, there's no right, way. Right, right. You don't fucking know what you're talking about. There's no way. It's not one eighty nine. Yeah, it's gonna be it's at not, least. It's not just a guessing game. It's gonna be at Sorry, least high two hundreds. I think. What it'll, was be, it'll, be, it'll be two fifty two two ninety nine is what it's gonna be. Uh, Dane <laughs> said two forty nine. I said two ninety nine. Last man. One one dollar. <laughs> I count. I, I think it's gonna try to undercut all the PS4 buyers. No, nah, there's too much with it. It's yeah. too. It's got Integra one two chip, whatever the hell it is. It's it's weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's got too many good least. titles too that pe- they, yeah. they're gonna sell. They're yeah. They're gonna sell. The you they're need going to quick. jump on it. You need to jump on it earlier. You're gonna miss out, and they're gonna be sold out. So yeah. But <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested to see the price point. Uh, if there's going to be any other um, release titles, um, we yeah. we know the big ones, and those alone are like hell yeah, I'm all in. So if yeah. they can throw another curveball at me, we'll see. Nintendo, you'll take it. Yeah, you'll take it right in the I mean, face. I won't you? I will take it in the face, uh, all <laughs> over. What there's a? Have you guys seen? Um, why him with uh, Franco? <laughs> anyways, but no. there's a point in that uh, in the movie where the guy's talking about Bukaki or whatever. But anyways, I'm sure there is it's a Franco movie. <laughs> anyways, all over the if face. If you had a nickel, all over the face. If I had a nickel, <laughs> down Boner Creek with my Nintendo gaming console, I go. That's right, dude. I'm right. I'm, I'm sitting shotgun down Boner Creek with you. I'm but ready to I go. don't. 
I don't, and you can talk a little bit more. This might be a segue, but I don't play my PlayStation 4 a ton right now until uh, Andromeda and the one that's coming out in February with a chick. and She's fighting the mechanical dinosaurs. I can't remember the name, but that is going to be awesome too. So I might be playing those two and then Zelda. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to just buy a PS4 when Andromeda comes out because I, I just want to, I want to play it and I would I want to play it with you, Dane. Yeah, down Boner Creek together. I with think. a bunch of nickels. Plantains, plantains, and nickels. Ah, oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh Lord! Oh Lord! It's the name of your band. <laughs> Last man, did you have any insight on this before we move on past the? Uh, the launch uh, titles for for Nintendo Switch. I'm stoked. I mean, all I I'm with Dane though. All I want is freaking Zelda. It's all I want. Mm-hmm. True. And of the new Mario. In agreement. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Mario and Zelda. That's all I care about. Yep. And Smash yeah. Brothers, I guess. <laughs> so, and uh, every every Mario uh, game ever. <laughs> oh, and and um, I don't know if anyone's playing the new Pokemon Sun and Moon. I wonder if that will transfer over to the Switch, if there's going to be like a little port for DS games. Because that would be a game changer, if that's the case. Quite literally. Quite a game changer, literally a change. game console you'll, changer. You'll change, you'll change quite literally, your games. No, quite literally, they'll probably port it over. I mean, that's oh, what oh, happens. They, just, yeah. they just turn it into a, into a title. Like a link, uh, like a little plug, whatever. I... I think that they um, they're gonna ride. So on that, I'm sorry, Bob. We we have all cut you off now. But I think that we yeah. they will they will ride that mobile uh, 3ds Sun and Moon thing, and they'll let that go. And then they'll they'll probably maybe like a year after launch, or whatever, they'll make a Pokemon game for the Switch. Yeah. That well, that will take elements from Pokemon Go, Pokemon Sun and Moon, and all these new games in the red or whatever the, the hell it is, because they're. They're having a lot of success right now because of Pokemon Go. Yep. Nintendo's not stupid. They're gonna they're gonna say, listen, man, how can we get this onto the Switch onto you know everybody? Yeah. So that's coming. I don't think that'll be a launch title. I think it's gonna be well, like the dumb things they have already. If, but if they're smart but the, 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 Go ahead, Ryan. I was gonna say the fact that it's a portable device in a sense would actually make that more plausible than right. anything. So yeah, so you're you can walk around and get Pokemon with your Switch, right? That would make sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just don't throw it at a TV. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a Wii. Don't so. walk in a pool either. Jesus. No, you can't control that. <laughs> no, I can't. Laos, I'm sorry. Did you have some insight you want to shed on this? I actually no. I don't have too much insight on it. I mean, it sounds like fun. Uh, you know, one the only thing I would want and hope for forever out of it is uh, some sort of weird Mario Kart where things just get super weird because everything's in like three pieces now with the Switch. Um, yeah. I like that. Yeah, that'd be would cool. You, would you settle for Would you settle for a Mario Kart ride at Univ- Who the fuck is eating peanuts? Not me. <laughs> Laos. Laos. <laughs> Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Over that mouth. It's not me. <laughs> All right, take two. Somehow it stopped. It's not on it stuff. Laos, would you settle for a Mario Kart ride at Universal where you could actually influence other no. riders? No, you wouldn't. Okay, well, it's fine. I would. Right, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I would do that, but what, how many times do we have to play that? Like when I have to wait in a 45 minute long line? Universal has to too many 3D bullshit. Oh it. yeah, yeah, but you know that's, that you, that Mario Land is coming to Universal. Nintendo Land is. Yeah. But yes. That's gonna be amazing. That'll be cool. That is what's coming. Mario Kart difficult. is coming. Don- Donkey Kong is coming. Mario Kart is. They coming. got rid. Is that I, where? Uh... I don't think it's been discussed what's going where just yet, but it is. It is those two titles specifically were addressed. So. Got it. But that's a tangent. That's a tangent. So let's get on to the next one. You guys got any more? Lost? You got any more? Ryan, you got any more on that? Nintendo Switch. I'm no? I'm good. I can't wait for it to come out. So. Yeah. So, so this one, uh, so Ryan, this is kind of again probably something. In Laos, you've played you've played the Mass Effect franchise, but I know Ryan, you, you are going to be foreign to this. Mainly, I put uh, this yep. on here because I know that Dane is tapped into this. I, I'm semi tapped. <laughs> I'm semi hard on this stuff. I'm gonna um, go grab a beer. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, so Laos, I know you'll play this again because me and Dane will drag you into it. But um, of course, 
And we're going to tag you into a PlayStation 4, so get ready. Yeah, so get ready for that. Man. Save maybe your I'll, last bucks. Maybe I'll just give you $250, <laughs> and you can just buy one yourself. We'll see what happens. Hey, now. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm really excited for it because as Dane – Dane, you actually – you were the one that got me into Mass Effect yeah. uh, from, a, from a gaming standpoint years and years ago. So um, I'm stoked for Andromeda. And, and we just we, – we grabbed this article from – uh, geek.com because it had uh, f- top five reasons to be excited for Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm going to run through them just to summarize. And then Dane, if you don't mind kind of hinting on these as we can go through and I'll, I'll contribute what I know. Cause I don't know a ton, but um, basically, so the top five are, it's a whole new world, um, which is unique because as of right now in the three game franchise, there has been, basically one galaxy that we explore and we can explore different pieces and parts of it, but essentially Mm -hmm. there are similar planets, similar places, similar uh, textures, backgrounds, screens, things, vehicles, people, so uh, species, Solarians, you know, Krogans, whatever. So stoked about that larger galaxy again with, with, as you could assume with any game that's coming out post, you know, other franchise games, they they are bigger, better, better, uh, more free ranging things like that. I love Mass Effect. I would love a truly free ranging Mass Effect. I think that if they could take some of the No Man's Sky and things like that that are just like randomly generated in, in new planets, um, who knows if it's that intense? But a larger galaxy excites me. Um, a standalone story, so it has nothing to do with Captain Shepard, which yep. is is cool, and I yep. like that because his story was. Um, awkwardly ended. So I would love to see this and what they've promised is a, a, a beginning and a ending for the story. No questions asked. Love that. New combat. Love that. And then the last thing that they said is is, is space loving. So basically, <laughs> um, a lot more romantic partners. Now, part of Mass Effect, which again is the sexy hook, is that yeah. you, you as the character could choose a relationship with a with a certain sect? Uh, there's a tree of each of each character, and it was neat because on if you told one girl she was a bitch and one girl that she was cool, <laughs> that the girl that you told was cool would like you, and then if you if you continued <laughs> to walk on that path, you would sacrifice points in a in a paragon or a uh i forget the other uh, other tree of it but basically you would sacrifice points in one direction to influence points of her wanting to get with you which which was it, listen we're all geeks okay we're talking about geeky shit yeah it's we did stupid. it it's video game sexy stuff with blue aliens and yeah. tentacles and crap. <laughs> right. i want to see the, the scene okay right i just want to see <laughs> like, man, tentacles see- some tentacle stuff <laughs> It's like, bro, did you get with the blue? Did you get the blue alien, or did you get with a human, or did you get with the robot lady? And it's like, bro, were you the one dude that that was gay? That's the weird thing. Like, it's, <laughs> you look at percentage. It was, it was not. There was not a lot of dude on dude, which is to each his own, man. I'm just, it's fine. It's cool. I'm just saying, the blue mm-hmm. alien was like way up here. Green alien was second, and then, you know, regular person. I got with the human. On accident, though, I was trying another one. For the dude. And <laughs> trying trying the for dude. the dude. We got you. <laughs> Owner Kirk got yeah, the Yeah, Dan, enough about your weekend, weekend, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bro. Trying to talk fast. Yeah, I was going here. down in the barracks. Right. <laughs> oh. So before before we get into that, Dane, can you can you break these down just a little bit as, as, a, as a more, as a more uh, intimate fan that, that really – appreciates the galaxy because you because you have played them all i played one yeah. i played three you talked me into both of them um i'd love to hear your, your thoughts on what what you are looking for from andromeda, andromeda here. all right so for all the viewers and listeners that are interested in andromeda be sure to check out uh nvidia's uh they had a keynote and they actually showed a short trailer in the short trailer um, they had a small chunk of combat and they had a little bit of an updated menu system. Um, it looked good. What I like about Andromeda is they don't need to support, um, the, the legacy consoles. Um, so the team have the freedom to raise the overall 
um, graphical bar, if you will. So the graphics look really good. The combat looks really good. Now you have more of a freedom to build your character as you want. So you're not stuck with just the Vanguard or the guy that likes to shoot them up. You're not stuck with that. You actually have um, a tree line, kind of like um, not so a much forest. world. Yeah, not yeah, <laughs> yeah, forest. Yeah, forest. Yeah, you're in a forest and you just chew stuff. And it's awesome. <laughs> no, I don't um, even mean like like you literally have have the ability to build. So like, a character. for instance, in the in the trailer, it shows a flamethrower. So if you want to build your flamethrower up, you choose your flamethrower, and then you build. You have these little things you choose, which makes it stronger and stronger and stronger. And then you update it in a sense. If you, you gain certain experience and you can spin it towards that. So another thing that this may draw back or it may be awesome. I don't know. But it looked like you can only use three abilities at one time. So, yeah, you're shooting them up, shooting them up. And then if you have your ability set for flamethrower, you can use your flamethrower. And then you can use um, – the ability to stop mechanical items um, from shooting lasers at you. You can use that ability. Sabotage thing. Yeah, yeah. but you're stuck yeah. with those abilities unless you change them. So what I'm thinking is going to happen is I'm going to get stuck with certain abilities that I like, and I'm going to try to hammer those out, and I'm going to be stuck with these super power abil- powerful abilities that are awesome. But as I progress, because another thing they talked about was like – I remember in the trailer it said something about being a pathfinder. So you're like exploring things. But it's like, well Which has always been that's always been in the DNA of of that game. Yeah. So I don't know how they're gonna um suit that towards the player if it's gonna be like, well, you gain points for pathfinding because you're searching this shit. Or hey, you just blew that guy's head off, so you get more uh shooting points i don't know i think that'll be that'll be like a, a merit-based badge yeah. thing as halo does and uh the xbox live does you know I, I think that's how it could be yeah i don't know that but uh another thing you know it was previously reported that andromeda was getting rid of the class system that came to reality when they showed this trailer it allows you more freedom in how you react to each situation which is cool there's a narrative reason um, like I was saying, the pathfinding, whatever. There's a narrative reason for your hero's ability to flip. You can flip between profiles as the game progresses. So like I was saying, I don't know if you're going to get stuck in one, and then if you flip to a different one, if like everything you built up for that past profile changes over. I don't know how that's going to work. but So I, I have a theory on yeah. that, and I've not heard that, because again, like I knew that you would, you'd probably be a little more tapped in than I was, but what if, what if it was like, because you know, you always like... Yeah. In Laos, you may vaguely know about this, and Ryan's just checking sports stories right now. As you built, as you as you go through the game, even in the multiplayer Laos that you played, you mm-hmm. assign points and guns oh, yeah. and abilities to your allies. So, Dane, what I envision is that you hit that that swap, and then all of a sudden now you're as the you're the Krogan, and then you yeah. hit that swap, and now you're Talia, and then you hit that swap, and now you're you sure. know the the robot lady, whatever. I think you're all right. So well. We digress. The capability, <laughs> digress. The capability <laughs> your capability is going to be unique to your character. And then the other party members, because I'm assuming you're – they didn't show it, but I'm assuming you're going to have, you know, the yeah. typical team. Those yeah. other party members will obviously fill the more <laughs> traditional roles as they did in the previous games. Yeah, I, I don't uh, But there is that right. skill system. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I hope it's – um. so the old the old skill tree was pretty – structured i hope it was sure i I hope this will be and i'm trying to think of a good example as to how you know what's a weird example is um skyrim skyrim has the the weirdest skill tree because you could be part this and part that and part this and this and that it's gonna be just like that i think it would make your guy like span this instead of going well you've got these six choices so you can hit x y or z and that you know what I mean, like it. Well, was, uh, obviously you're gonna have your three: uh, combat, biotic, and uh, uh, tech. tech. Yeah, tech. So you're obviously gonna have those three, but you can choose. So like, yeah, I want to be the shoot 'em up guy with the sniper rifle, but I also want to be able to shoot 
yeah. freaking biotic at somebody or yeah. throw them in the air and blast them. Yeah. And not only be stuck with a shotgun if you're biotic. So, well, thank you, Dane. Uh, yeah, last man. minute, anything else? Uh, no, that sounds cool. I mean, I'd get down on that. Uh, I, I'd like if it was more like Skyrim. I mean, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Like, you know, like you said, some people like spreading spreading the love around. Some people are like myself or like, I, you know, if I'm going to be somebody, I'm going to snipe or I'm going to shoot them up or I'm going to do one of those other weird things like take probiotics, like Dane said. So, I mean, that's <laughs> not what Dane said. I do, I do have a question for you. Yeah, though. trust me. I'm a pro. <laughs> yeah. so, so, but you, yeah, did you, play, you, you did play the, the multiplayer and i think the multiplayer out of um me3 basically pulled like the best qualities out of that game and then made it very simplified and very digestible for the non mass effect fan so just coming from that because you did play it and you had a type and you had a guy that you liked playing what what do you what did you like about that and what would you love to see them improve upon for a multiplayer experience on this new elevated game. I'd love just like five minute elevator pitch. How about, you know, roll with the tide here. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it seems like all other games can do it now. I mean, why don't we up the player size? I mean, it was kind of ridiculous that we were looking at what was the max, like six on or four. Okay. That was four on robots. I mean, you know, <laughs> I think what the new battlefield can do 32 on 32. So we're talking yeah, 64, I was say it's players like 60, 64 players. Yeah. Which is nuts. It's crazy. I mean, in a game yeah, like but, that, I mean, it, it gets a little bananas, but I mean, in a game like mass effect, maybe don't do that. Maybe do, I don't yeah. know, 24, maybe do. Uh, that something. would still be, that would still be like a thousand biotics just firing off uh, explosions. And, and I think it, that so, was their first take at multiplayer um, anyways. And yeah, yeah. nobody, it was a, that was strictly a one-player game. So, but, yeah, but, but you're telling me you're telling me that you know all those you know wonderfully awesome-looking cutscenes where a wave of crazy people all of a sudden appear. You telling me that that should just remain a, a single-player thing? I mean, can't no, that like just be when a we played thing? multiplayer, it was awesome. I loved it. What about three? You know, five multiple dropships showing up, and there's good guys in the dropship. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, why? Why I can't think open you know, world? Open, open world here. Yeah, because again, even the multiplayer was insanely confined. It was it was well, great and it was detailed. Yeah, and it, was, it was powerful and there was hiding and things. But expanding that would be great if you could have a Halo esque kind of terrain yeah. to to traverse when you're trying to do this stuff. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see I that. Mean, That'd be cool. Give us some space. Give us some vehicles. Some weird stuff. Eat some pistachios still on there. And maybe they won't even Let's have multiplayer. Ride. I. I haven't read that they they haven't mentioned it at all. So it'll be interesting to see because in the multiplayer you had your certain characters and and then you unlocked certain players. So I I don't know where they're gonna go with it. I love I love I really oh. did enjoy the unlocking feature because that is the only reason I played the damn game. <laughs> like just 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 to like unlock shit. And like that guy was... from YouTube, Donnie, that you told me about, and he's like, yeah, yeah so uh, this is how you uh, build your character. That guy was funky. awesome. Funky. He was so awesome. That guy was awesome, and he played He played so much Mass Effect. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, dude. Like, God, I want to build my characters just like his, Funky. I did. I built all my characters <laughs> like his. They were so great. Wow, we've dwelled <laughs> on this Mass Effect thing. Clearly, me and Dane are lusting for so a good. Mass Effect. So, Laos, don't worry. We will get you on board just like Boner we got Creek. you on board the last one. Boner Creek. <laughs> Welcome Ryan. aboard to Boner Creek. <laughs> All aboard. You're the one with the yaks, bro. Take us. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ryan. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ryan, tell me a story about Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> Only. <laughs> yeah, in my days. Yeah, I smoked cigars and drank beer and killed aliens the fuck are you talking about i'm commentating what he's saying he looks like he's dwelling on the past of mass effect <laughs> i feel like i muted him and now i can't unmute him <laughs> i can't i can't um, is he holding this uh, it looked like he was holding a cigar bro let me tell let me drink some more scotch and tell you about my days uh, in the mass effect world killing aliens and there he is. blue aliens and is that better was i <laughs> muted yes yes you were muted. oh I had no yep. idea I was muted. Commentary. That's okay, Dane. Dane was giving you all sorts of commentary. I'm <laughs> sure you didn't hear it. 
I, I was just saying, I, I've been massively affected by not having anything good to say <laughs> about any of this. So, <laughs> they have Poor Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> See, the good news is I, that we have, to all the we listeners have, out there, I wish I was more of a gamer. I apologize, but when it comes to techie stuff, I'm okay. When it comes to games, eh, not so much. You have two daughters. We get it, man. Uh, well, I should know more. No, not yet. You will, I'm sure. Not yet. I will. Well, I know all about American thing. Girl Doll. I know all about all that stuff because that's that's the thing right now. But that's that'll be next uh, next week on a podcast. Yeah. We'll do yep. Mommy Cast with Ryan Roberts. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, my name is Ryan. Throwing plantain chips everywhere. So this is what you're going to oh, do. Why would you do that, Ryan? Uh, just saying. What kind of mommies are you attracting if you're throwing plantain up? The fun ones. Uh, <laughs> oh, what are you talking about here? We've been, we've been down this hole long enough. I think we should just... Nah. Too many holes. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. do, it All right. <laughs> do it loud. Do it loud. Do it loud. Oh, God. He's <laughs> really good at it. I just don't <laughs> like it at all. It's, it's oh, not, man. It's favorable. So <laughs> it's sketch to say the least. I mean, it's. That's a weird thing to do, man. It's just, <laughs> is that appropriate <laughs> ever? <laughs> Right now. It's never it's not been appropriate yet. I can say that. No, man. <laughs> if I had a nickel, oh. you'd have uh, hashtag, right. like hashtag if I had a nickel. That's it. I like That's it. today's hashtag. Every I day, like every podcast, we introduce you, except for the last six, we introduce you to, <laughs> to a new hashtag. It's, it's a thing that we're known for for the at least the twelve people that listen to us. We we we're, they know us for that. This week's is what? What did I say? If I had, <laughs> if a, nickel, I had a nickel, that's what it is. That's right. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag. If I had, if a, I had nickel. a nickel, we love you guys. We do. Anybody trending. else? <laughs> trending. <laughs> you can't just say trending. It's not. That doesn't make it. Trending. Is it that's why already trending? trending. trending. No. Does that mean it's trending? Hashtag. If I had trending. a nickel. Yep. No hashtag. hashtag if I had trending? a nickel. That's it. Does no, trending work as a hashtag? hashtag? Do you, is that uh, not how it works? Come on, Ray Bill. Um, how many nickels is this going to cost me? <laughs> a lot if we keep talking. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Okay. Today, today's show was supported by Amazon. Of course, please do use the Amazon affiliate link that we have tagged at the front top part and the bottom part and uh, whatever part you want to. It's a link. Just click it. it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just click it. And if you actually buy something, or if you know you're going to buy something, then click it first and then buy something. Question, so, Donnie. Uh, for sure. The, for the viewers and listeners, with the yeah. Amazon link, yep. uh-huh. if I were to use that link, does it bring up your yeah. account? No. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, so it will bring you It'll bring you straight to Amazon. So I use no that shit what. all the time. And I need to click yeah, the you, links. You should. Well, fuck you, Dane. You should be clicking our link. <laughs> yeah. Just click fuck the link, Amazon's man. Click shit. it. Click that link. Yeah, click the link. It, it, it's amazing because it, it, it you, gives you, us money. You, it, it gives us, us – it gives us, so what happens is I, I've actually talked to the Wizards. I, uh, I rolled up a script. I put it on an owl, and I sent it off to the Wizarding World. To Harry. Harry Potter, right. And, uh, and when oh, it came back, boy. they said, hey, listen, man, we give, we give a couple of zents, a couple of presents. So we get a couple of zents <laughs> every time uh, <laughs> that you, you purchase something just by using this link. So you click the link. It's magic. It goes to Amazon, regular you Amazon. You're, you're, already, you're logged in, right? You you get you get so we get so we get points. Well, they're 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 spread across Huffledorf, uh, Zed, Gryffindor, Zad, Zad of Friends, right, and <laughs> Gryffindor, and then whichever one of those wins the competition, we get all the money, right? Uh, See, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, Ryan, you're feeling what I'm putting down there. Yeah. So <laughs> every every one of the schools of Hufflepuff gives us a nickel. Right, and then we put those into a pot, and then when you buy something, we get all the nickels. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's how nickel. we get nickels. That's how we get nickels. It's, it's called nickel down economics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Harry Potter is, but they need to have led that example. But the good news is. <laughs> Thank, thank you to our listeners because from this, we, I think I got a, the first check I got from Amazon was actually about $43. So thank you very much for nice. using thank you guys. our Amazon yeah. link. We really, 
We really appreciate it. And with that, with those forty-three dollars, we can buy things like a small amount of beer, or one microphone, or internet for for one month. So we really do appreciate. You. <laughs> 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 It's expensive. <laughs> so it's all expensive. that nickel economics. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Thank you, anyways. Please use the link, guys. Where can they find you? Get the fuck out of here! Come on, <laughs> just come on. Bruce Brian one three on Twitter. Let's go. <laughs> Ask me some questions, man. Send them to me. Send them. Send them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's the deal dude? with no questions? Oh, Show me the <laughs> questions. <laughs> Lost man, where can they find you, please? Uh, they can. I can be found at Mister Louse Man. Uh, go ahead and send me everything, just whatever you want, just all sorts of stuff, all over the grid. They should send, send you me some send them some nudes. Send Basically, some if, nudes. You, if you have a recommendation <laughs> for what Louse beard should look like, you should send Ooh. it to Louse. Mr. Lousman on Twitter. Uh, he loves those, right? He wants as many of those. Absolutely. So just just take a pick. Maybe it's your own beard. Maybe it's a different beard. Doesn't matter. Just just you can actually six send six at a time. Like each individual tweet. Just send six tweets. Just find ridiculous Keep... things with red beards yeah. and send that you would good. suggest. Yeah. If you think that he should wear those, he will wear one of those. If you don't send them to him, he won't wear them. So just send them. You gotta know Same. where I'm going with this thing. Where can they find you? You can find me at Hogwarts, uh, Whoa. <laughs> Gryffindor Seeker, just kidding. At, 69. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gryffindor Seeker. Um, so wrong. It was a kid, right? It was an ex kid. Uh, hold on, let me it's check. A kid's book. Hold on here. I got notes on this. How old is Hermione? I don't understand. Ah, uh, old enough. At, no. at this point, yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, you can find me at DT Merck on the Twitterverse, okay? So send, me some, send me some cool stuff, okay? Questions. I, I'm not on there a lot, but I want to be. When he is. I want to be. So, what's up? Twitter. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. And uh, you can always reach the show. Hashtagging uh, Brewmasters Club cast or at Brewmasters Club on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, please reach out to us. Send us a note. If you want to send us an email, that's great. Do we read it? Can't guarantee that. Info at brewmasters.club. <laughs> Very simple. We love you guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Welcome Cheers. to 2017. We love you. This is our first episode of 2017, so yeah, way to be there through 16. We are now in 17, bitches. Let's go, man. Can't kill me. Can't kill me. Just happy he loves the in his face. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews and Geek News. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers! <laughs>